aside from the car, I do have another little project I'm working on that I'm not going to film working on it because I want to actually enjoy building it and filming is a pain in the neck. I've got my Meccano and I, I still need to finish my Meccano gramophone. Um, basically build the horn for it. The rest of it's there and it works, works reasonably well. But I keep thinking where the hell am I going to put it because the horn is going to be quite big. I don't want to leave it sitting there. I suppose I could make another shelf up here or something, but I don't have anywhere to put it. And um, I decided I wanted to do another project that involves a little bit of machining and other sort of engineering stuff. So I quite like the little Mammod steam engines. I've got four of them. I've got two traction engines and two stationary engines, but I've always wanted one of the cars. Um, there's a nice little Mammod uh, steam car similar size to my Meccano one and that got me thinking well I figured out how to 3D print the tires for these Meccano wheels I've got plenty of them I've got lots of chain and sprocket type stuff I've got nothing else to use that for I've got lots of gears so why not build my own little steam car and I started with the boiler uh, this is actually my third attempt at the boiler. So I'm using copper water pipe. Uh, it's 50 mil, two inch diameter. Copper pipe like this. And I was initially looking at using end caps for the end of the boiler. But they don't fit right. They're, they're too loose. So I want the boiler to be silver soldered. And you need much tighter clearances for that. Also it looks a bit crappy. So I did the trick where you cut a blank of copper and then you hammer it round a former. This is a hardwood former, a piece of ash, because I've got lots of leftover ash. And you make little end caps that press into the boiler. Um, so I ended up doing that. It's actually still sitting in its pickling solution. I've been slowly filing off the excess silver solder. There's the end cap there. Um, I machined up the little fittings from a piece of, it's either brass or bronze. I, I'm not actually sure what it is. That's the problem when you've just got a junk box full of random bits of metal. Uh, but it's this, which actually came with my lathe. And I'm pretty sure this is bronze. Um, it looks different to the brass. It sounds a bit different. And uh, it's a... Uh, Brass is very yellowy, this is a little bit more reddish. So I'm pretty sure that's bronze. Brass would work as well. So I made up little fittings with quarter BSP um, threads on them. One for the safety valve, one for a fill level. So that fills it to three quarter full. Um, figuring out how high up to make a hole in the end of a cylinder to match three quarters is kind of interesting. Obviously, if you put it, it at the midpoint, it'll be half full, but it's not then a quarter again up to get it three quarters full, if that makes sense. Um, I cheated, I used CAD to figure it out, to get the measurement. So, like I say, that's sitting in the pickling stuff. I'll leave that for another few hours and then give it a good clean to get the flux off. Um, I'm basically gonna copy the mammoth dimensions, the little, piston the cylinders and the ports. I'm going to try and do the same sort of reverser mechanism that they use on the traction engine which is basically because the whole piston and cylinder oscillates it's on a little eccentric and as you move the lever it moves it up and down so it changes the port uh, direction effectively. So instead of the exhaust being on the top the exhaust being on the bottom which in effect reverses the reverses the polarity as they would do on Doctor Who and Star Trek and all those kind of things. Um, this is a proper mammoth safety valve. Now I did think, oh, I can just buy one of these as a spare part, but I didn't realize mammoth have actually shut down. Um, they were going for years and years and years, and I think it was a couple of years ago they eventually folded, I guess. Um, so no more mammoth and no more parts. Uh, there are other places selling parts. So a safety valve like this in the UK, I think I found them for like 11, 12 pounds, which is fine. That's pretty reasonable. One place wanted £45 for postage. Uh, it's like, no, that's just ridiculous. I'm not paying that. I'll make my own. So 
Uh, these are tapped the same in case I ever come across one of the mammoth ones. I can just screw it in. Um, the other interesting thing I found out about Mammoth was they used to sell their steam engines with little solid fuel tablets. Apparently those got banned in the UK. Um, they're the same thing that are used in little camping stoves. And uh, I can't remember the chemical that's in them. Is it hexamine? Something like that. But apparently you can't get those anymore um, because you can turn them into explosives. And that's not a new thing. Uh, there's actually a, a US Army manual, I think it's from the 60s or 70s, that explains how to do it. So it's not like it's new. Um, so I don't know why they suddenly decided these are dangerous and they needed to ban them. But that's what they did. So in the UK now, I think people are using um, chafing just dish, dish gel or gas burners or meth burners. So I'll build a little meth burner, which is what I was going to do anyway, because you can get methylated spirits from anywhere. Uh, it's already become an interesting little project. Just, I just like reading the books about steam engines and things like that. I have made little engines like this before, so this isn't completely new to me, but um, it's good fun. Although that is my third attempt at the boiler. Uh, the other couple didn't go well. The second one, I tried to put in a lathe to, to sand off some of the solder and it got caught. And because it's copper, it's so soft, it just ripped it to bits, dented it all up. Uh, once I've finished cleaning it, I will give it a pressure test. So I've cobbled this together from my box of brass fittings. I've got an interesting thing where I always struggle to use things up. Um, I don't know if other people will understand what I mean, but for example, I've got a box of all these brass fittings and bits and pieces, and I don't like using them. Um, I don't know what it is. It's like, oh, they were quite expensive, so I don't want to use it up, or I don't want to use it on this because I might need it on something else. But it's always a little bit of a mental block for me, and I have to force myself to just say, well, no, you need it, use it. Uh, it's the same with machining stuff, like chopping bits off pieces of brass or things like that. It's like, oh, I, I get so worried about wasting it, I, I don't end up using it, which is just ridiculous. So... It's like making these boilers. Um, you know, I started off with a length of tube sort of three times that, or three more lengths like that. Um, and uh, that stuff's expensive. So, so I just need to get over myself and actually do things. Uh, it's the same when you're doing metalwork and you've got a nice, brand new, perfectly clean sheet of aluminium and you just need a piece this big. And I really have to force myself to, to take the shears to that piece of metal and cut it up um, because for some reason in my brain it makes I feel like I'm wasting it even though I'm using it for something I need it for but same with this um, but I've used the brass fittings uh, because the steam engine is just the little threaded bosses uh, 1 quarter 26 BSF got plenty of BSF bolts well not plenty but I've got a few so I can block those off and this little thing is a pressure gauge, goes up to 60 psi, which is probably what I'll test the boiler to, 50 or 60. Running pressure will only be 15, 20 psi. Um, so this has a sort of car or bike Schrader valve on the end. So I can pump it up and shut it off with this to hold the pressure. And of course you do that with the boiler full of water, so it's a hydrostatic test, you don't do it with compressed air. But, um, yeah, that should be interesting. The boiler is probably the hardest part to make, uh, because it takes silver soldering and you have to get that right. Um, silver solder is ridiculously expensive now. Uh, so the stuff I ended up using is actually for plumbing type stuff. I think for model engineering you'd probably want high percentage of silver, but I use it for hot water cylinders and plumbing pipes and its melting point is 700C, so it's, it's going to be more than good enough for the boiler. Um, and depending on how that goes, I might put little uh, radio control gear in it. So we'll see. Like I say, it's, it's just something to do when I'm either waiting for things for the Riley or I don't feel like working on it. 
or I just want to do some other little project that involves a little bit of machining and filing and um, you know working things out so I have to have multiple projects now that the, the bikes finished um, so exhaust back onto that this is my little pressure testing setup I did initially try using this it's um, silicone fuel hose but it leaked I was hoping this could just kind of screw onto the fitting there uh, which it did but then it just leaked around the fitting so I ended up switching to a piece of thick wall fuel hose and a little bit of a cable tie there and I'm just using a little bike foot pump um, because this is full of water you don't need a huge volume of air you're only compressing the air sort of in the hose effectively um, so you don't need an air compressor or anything I find just the foot pump works fine and it's been holding 60 psi for 10 minutes uh, I'm not sure how long I should run this test for I'll probably just leave it see if it slowly leaks down but I believe if it is leaking it's leaking from here uh, there's absolutely nothing leaking around the boiler uh, these end caps go in quarter of an inch. Um, I really enjoy making the end caps. I don't know why. Uh, I think it's because I'm sort of an amateur metal worker and I like doing metal work stuff and shrinking and stretching. But being able to take a, a flat disc of copper and turn it into, into this basically just by hand. I don't know why. It's very satisfying. Um, and you don't need much. Just... The hardwood block the only reason for the hole through the middle is because i turned it on the lathe so i needed to hold it um, this is the sort of copper piping i'm going to use it's just one eighth copper tube and i'm not going to copy the mammoth car uh, i'm probably going to do something a little bit different body wise i'm thinking something more like the um sort of Edwardian aero engine Brooklyn's the giant race cars um, like that is it the Fiat 76 I can't remember what it is um, Beast of Turin those big cars big huge round bonnet thing on the top um, something like that because I can't do a Brooklyn's because there's no room in it so I want something big and chunky because if I do radio control it I need to hide the receiver and the uh, the servos and the battery and that's dropping ever so slightly but again it's around the hose if I move this it starts leaking around the hose so I think that's looking really good like I say 60 psi that's three times what its working pressure is going to be um, I did measure the volume I used this 10 mil syringe to fill it up and I measured 260 mils, but I think I lost count. Um, I think I counted one syringe twice. So I went and checked it on CAD by measuring it and modeling it and getting the volume. And the volume works out to be 250. So yeah, I think I miscounted one, one filling. But um, basically what you do is you want to arrange these little engines so that the fuel runs out before the water. Um, so you size the burner uh, so that the flame goes out before you've run out of water because you don't want to boil them dry. Uh, this one, it probably wouldn't do too much to it because it's silver soldered, so it's, it's not going to melt the solder. Uh, some of the original Mammoth and other steam engines of that type were just soft soldered. So those you definitely wouldn't want to run dry because the solder would melt and it would all fall apart. Um, but there's no danger of this that happening with this one I'm not going to polish the copper there's no point because you can't easily keep it polished it'll it'll tarnish um, especially once it's got water and heat and oil and stuff like that all over it so I'm just going to sand it up a little bit um, just using my, my red scotch bright just to get it clean and I'll leave it like that um, the little mammoth reversing mechanism is quite interesting I'll have to think up another way to do that. Uh, on it, it's got the flat back plate and then a almost a very thin sort of cylinder that sticks out and the little pressed lever sits on top of that cylinder and that's what it rotates around. 
it's got an off centre hole which the um, the cylinder for the piston bolts to so that it acts as that eccentric to move the pivot point of the the whole piston up and down. I'm going to copy the dimensions because those work and the traction engine it's um, the right sort of size so it's about a 5 16th diameter piston uh, I think it's a three quarter inch throw on the crank um, but since those dimensions definitely work as far as I know the mammoth steam car is the same uh, that's what I'll do for this I'll, I'll just make it the same it's not going to be fast or particularly powerful but it should go on flat ground I'm hoping I've just sprayed around the air hoses with a bit of soapy water. I have to be really careful doing that because I've also got a bottle of WD-40 in a similar bottle and I have picked up the wrong one before. But uh, yeah, no bubbles. Um, it definitely leaks from the hose if I move it. So it's been sitting there 20 minutes, nearly 25 minutes now at 60 psi. So I think I'm going to call that boiler good. Um, it's longer than its run time, I imagine. Um, this is why I've got the little ball valve thing in here. Um, this valve should be able to hold that pressure as well, of course, but I can just shut it off with that. Yeah, I probably don't need that, that valve. That's good. I might leave it overnight. There's, there's no reason not to. Um, just see what it ends up at in the morning. <laughs> 